Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, and I'm very pleased to be joined by some of my colleagues in government, as well as uh, consumer advocates, to alert the public to some very troubling information that my office uncovered in the toy aisles of Kmart, Target, and Toys R Us all across the state of New York. Our investigators purchased toys from these retailers that were found to contain toxic levels of lead. These are children's toys. This violates both federal and state law, and the government officials and advocates who are here with me today are obviously very concerned about toxic toys being sold in their community, and they are prepared to do something about it. I am joined by Mayor Lovely Warren, and I'm grateful for the mayor for hosting us here at Rochester's beautiful City Hall. Uh, Assembly Majority Leader Joe Morelli, Senator Joe Robach, Bobby Chase Wilding, the Deputy Director of Clean and Healthy New York, Elizabeth McDade, the Executive Director of the Coalition to Prevent Lead Poisoning, Carol Crittenden, the Director of Empire State Consumer Project, and Judy Brayman of the Empire State Consumer Project. Um, is Jennifer Becker? Yes, Jennifer Becker, Project Coordinator, Western New York Lead Poisoning Resource Center, and Kate Kate, Kate Winnebeck, uh, an environmental health and safety specialist at RIT. So <clears throat> we're not just here as public officials and advocates. Ladies and gentlemen, most of the folks standing before you are parents, some grandparents. I'm a father and I hope to be a grandfather, although not too soon. But, <laughs> But on a personal level, um, it's horrifying to think that in spite of a layer of legal protections at both the federal and the state level, you can walk into a store and buy toys for your child or grandchild from the most trusted retailers, biggest retailers in the nation, and that that toy could end up causing brain damage. As we've all been reminded recently, by the crisis in Flint, Michigan, children who were exposed to even small amounts of lead uh, suffer serious, often irreversible health problems, including an impaired ability to learn and read, attention deficit, hyperactivity, irritability, and other problems. At high levels, lead can cause brain damage and even death. If a toy contains lead, children can ingest it either by chewing or sucking on it, or touching them and then putting their hands in their mouths. And as anyone who has ever raised a toddler knows, everything they can get in their hands goes in their mouths. So under the Federal Consumer Product Safety Act, lead content in children's products is strictly limited to no more than 100 parts per billion. The manufacturer or distributor of any product intended for use by a child under 12 is required to test that product at a government accredited laboratory to make sure the product doesn't exceed those standards. And then the manufacturer or distributor must certify with a children's product certificate that the product meets these safety standards. Retailers are only supposed to sell products that have been certified. So my office sent a letter to these retailers that we uh, investigated um, and others uh, last November, reminding actually November of 2014, so quite some time ago, reminding them of these legal obligations. Unfortunately, our follow-up investigation found that the consumer safety net had broken down. We tested toys purchased at Target, Kmart, and Toys R Us stores in Buffalo, Syracuse, Long Island, and New York City, um, and found that some contained lead levels 10 times the legal limit. We found the same toys on store shelves right here in Rochester. Um, crazy Art brand children's jewelry making kits supplied by La Rose Industries were found to contain lead at levels of 120 to 980 parts per million. Clear violation of federal law and state law which prohibits the sale, import, or manufacture of children's products that pose an unreasonable risk of injury as these toys clearly do. So our response to these violations is uh, guided by the principle of safety first. <clears throat> we have called on these retailers and written to them um, 
uh, and, and to other retailers, such as Walmart and Amazon, which are known to sell the same products, called on them to stop selling them immediately and, and confirm that they have the proper certification for any other toys they're selling, uh, and to issue recall orders. Uh, we want to minimize any further exposure of New York's children to these products. We have also called on the Federal Consumer Product Safety Commission to issue a mandatory national recall of these products, and I'm very pleased to announce that today the uh, CPSC announced that they are conducting a thorough investigation into these matters. Um, but we also have to figure out how the safety net broke down. Um, that's why my office is continuing to investigate this matter. Ultimately, our goal is to fix the problem at its source, whether it's an importer or a manufacturer. Uh, too often, dangerous products are addressed by a one-off recall, and authorities never find out what was the system breakdown that allowed this product to get through, get through and get on the shelves, and then other dangerous products can slip through the same breakdown. Um, in my office, our goal is, uh, we often say, catching bad guys is good, but changing systems so there are no more bad guys to catch is better, and that is what we're seeking to do in this case. Our message to the industry is clear. Don't put children at risk. Take responsibility for this problem and improve your systems to keep toxic toys away from children. We will work with you on it, but we are going to vigorously pursue anyone who violates these very, very important laws. And with that, I'm pleased to introduce um, the great mayor of the city of Rochester, Lovely Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a great watchdog in our attorney general. I don't care if you're talking about predatory lending, if you're talking about lead in housing, or just things that are happening in the credit industry. Attorney General Steinman has been a watchdog for this community and a watchdog for New York State. I am excited and happy that his team has taken up this issue. We all know that lead poisoning in children does irreversible damage. We have been very proactive here in Rochester when it comes down to lead poisoning, talking about testing of our water, or even the homes that um, our children live in. And um, I'm glad to see Elizabeth McDade here who has represented this community so well when it comes down to advocating and making sure that we're doing everything possible here for to prevent lead poisoning in our children. I wanna also thank our legislators that are here as well because they have the laws on the books. Unfortunately, you have a situation where the laws that were enacted by our state legislators was not followed. And I am so happy that our Attorney General has uh, researchers and people, investigators that go into these stores, that look at these particular products and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do to protect uh, the consumer and our children. And so I'm excited as, a, as the mayor of this city to know that we have such great leaders in the state of New York and such great advocates here locally that are making sure that we're doing everything possible to protect our children and to protect our families. Thank you. And now a, a great advocate for this community and, and a, truly a statewide leader, uh, Assembly Majority Leader Joe Morelli. Thanks uh, so much. First of all, to all my uh, colleagues in government, the mayor, uh, Senator Robach, we get to work together and partner on many issues. This is a very, very important issue. Um, so I'm pleased to be with them. And I want to add my thanks to the Attorney General for his leadership on a whole host of issues. Uh, few would seem to be um, any more important than the question of what uh, is happening with our children. So I just wanted to recount uh, the Attorney General made mention of the fact that some of us have grandchildren. I spent last night, as I often do, with a nine-month-old named Jonas. Um, and uh, Jonas, my grandson, puts just about anything within his reach into his mouth. Um, Papa's glasses, a pen, whatever it is, that's how he explores his world, all, like most nine-month-olds. Um, and that's why this is so important, is we as parents, grandparents, as society, uh, expect that when we're purchasing toys, things that our children are engaged with on a daily basis, that they're going to be safe. That's why we have these levels in the first place. I remember as a child myself reading the story Alice in Wonderland, and there was a Mad Hatter, and I remember asking the question why they called him the Mad Hatter, because people made hats, used mercury, which it turns out is really bad for you. Well, in the 20th and 21st century, 
uh, lead is, we now know, is critically important, particularly in the development of, uh, of children, and that's why it's so important. The mayor mentions the, um, uh, the conversation around lead in water, which is becoming finally a huge national I issue as it is appropriate. Uh, and uh, the, um, you know, perhaps the only saving grace of what's happening around the country is this renewed focus on lead in our water supply and making sure that devices that, um, uh, that water flows through are lead free and that will continue to be a major issue in this country as we work to resolve it. But as importantly are the kinds of things uh, that our children and families are exposed to. And when we establish laws, when we establish rules about those levels, uh, we expect them to be maintained. So I, I, again, want to congratulate and thank the Attorney General for his leadership, both in terms of alerting uh, the federal consumer protection agencies to look at this, but also continue to drive awareness. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the people behind me here who have done so much. I mean, Rochester has really been the leader uh, in addressing lead paint, and the lead coalition here for years has worked to address this problem, to highlight it, and to do everything we can to remediate it. Um, so I'm pleased to be here with all my... Uh, my friends and colleagues here, and again, want to thank the Attorney General for his incredible leadership on this important subject. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now a, a, a longtime colleague of mine and a great advocate for this community, uh, Senator Joe Robot. Thank, thank you very much. I would just uh, join my colleagues and advocates up here and thank the Attorney General, not only for uh, launching the investigation with his team, but being here in Rochester, um, this is a critically important thing. This is one where the law is on the books, but wasn't getting enforced, and probably wouldn't have been uh, without the action of the Attorney General. So on behalf of all our families and kids, we say thank you, and uh, I hope everybody heard that now the proper authorities are gonna do an even more thorough investigation into it, as they probably should have originally, which again, I think will result in protecting more and more kids. Um, it's been said before, Rochester's been a leader in lead paint, uh, abatement, so many things, you know, clean water, everything else. But this one, I think, hits you on two levels. One, not only do we all have a special love and fondness for our children, but this is one, too, when you think about toys. Um, the earlier someone gets exposed to lead, the more damaging it can be in their development, in their lifetime. So this is critically, critically important that we get this, that the law is followed, and that all of us, from the enforcement end to the law end to the advocation end, uh, get on this and make sure our kids are as safe as could be. And because of the action taken by the AG and others, uh, that's happening now today. So I just want to add uh, my thanks. Thank you, and now we're going to hear from uh, Bobby Chase Wilding, the Deputy Director of Clean and Healthy New York. Good afternoon. I'm Bobby Wilding, Deputy Director of Clean and Healthy New York. We're an environmental health organization that works for safer chemicals, a sustainable economy, and a healthier world. We have thousands of supporters across New York State, and our testing of children's products from eight locations across the state, including here in Monroe County, show that there's a significant gap in the policies that protect our children from toxic chemicals and products they use every day. Children's bodies develop, uh, uh, making them uniquely vulnerable, as do their behaviors, to the harmful effects of toxic chemicals across their lifetime. In the case of lead, not only can it harm their brain development and potentially decrease IQ, it can damage organs like the heart and kidneys and others. We stood up with the Attorney General in December 2014 when he highlighted evidence of toxic chemicals in children's products and called on companies to be responsible and ensure that the products they make and sell are free from harmful chemicals. We applauded the Attorney General then and we applaud him now for following up and following through on this call to action. We welcome the additional scrutiny his office is providing over the companies that make and sell products that our children and families rely on. This will be an important measure to close that gap between what parents want for their children and what's all too commonplace in the market. We look forward to the day, to the day when parents and all people everywhere can walk into a store and choose an item from the shelf and know that it's free from toxic chemicals. And we're lucky to have Attorney General Eric Schneiderman here and doing all that he can to hasten that day. So thank you again for all your work. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, and, and now we're going to hear from Elizabeth McDade, who is the Executive Director of the Coalition to Prevent Lead Poisoning. We are incredibly lucky in this community that we have had a lead ordinance in place for well over 10 years, and I actually spy a, one of the city, a former city council member in the back of the room who was one of the group who voted unanimously to put this law into place. We have seen in Monroe County an over 80% reduction in the number of children reported with lead paint poisoning in the past 10 years, and that's because of the collaborative efforts of the City of Rochester, of the County Health Department, of all of the people you see behind me. We have truly made an, an enormous difference in the lives of children, and so you need to make sure that we're also taking care of and looking at all of the different uh, possibilities for where a child can get lead poisoned. Toys is certainly a part of it. But we always want to make sure that children are, uh, that families are actually getting their homes tested. If they live in a house that's before 1978, that they're getting their children tested in accordance with New York State law. And that anybody who hires a contractor to do any renovation work in their home also follows uh, EPA RRP regulations. That's a federal law to make sure that they are certified in that way. But we thank the Attorney General so much, so grateful. We are so grateful for all of our partners and all of the advocates and the people out there who are championing children and making sure that we are keeping them safe. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I really uh, want to emphasize uh, these are some of the products that are being distributed. If you can tell, these are wristbands, which kids love. And they use lead to make them more flexible because it's really cheap. But uh, you can, it's hard to imagine a child with a wristband like this not putting it into their mouth. These are the products that were on the shelves and that we're now going to get recalled um, as a result of these efforts. I do also do want to say, people are saying thank you to me, I wanted to be in Rochester to make this announcement because you have been such a leader in dealing with the issue of lead. That is not true in a lot of other parts of New York State. I was in Buffalo yesterday and the elevated lead levels of children in Buffalo is higher than the levels in Flint, Michigan. Not because of the water, but because of the lead paint and other products that produce lead. So we have ways to go in New York, but it's important to recognize the success Rochester's had. You are a model for other communities. And um, I am committed to working with you to keep our children safe and to hold accountable those who would violate the law and put them at risk. Thank you.